In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about identification of fats and oils. Now, what is identification of fats and oils? When we want to identify whether particular fat is pure or not, okay, at that time we need to employ a different techniques for the identification of fats and oils. If we want to identify, if we, if we perceive that particular fat is not pure, particular fat is not pure and we want to identify how much adulteration is there, we want to identify degree of adulteration in particular lipid degree of adulteration in particular lipid at that time also we can employ various methods of identification of fats and oils when we we come across some new lipid and we want to identify that what are, what is the composition of this lipid the composition the composition of of lipid if we want to identify that composition of lipid the primarily we can apply the ident various techniques of the identification of fats and oils so there are many techniques for the identification of fats and oils the first technique is the saponification number the first technique is the saponification saponification number this is most important technique most important primary technique now to understand this saponification number better we have to first understand that what is saponification what is saponification so saponification it is very simple term it is simply the process of making a soap it is the process of making soap now the question arises that what is soap what is soap so simply soap is the sodium or potassium salt of sodium or potassium salt of fatty acids of fatty acids so we know now we know that what is soap but how the soap can be made so for example if you have a triacylglycerol and we know that in the triacylglycerol we have one glycerol molecule we have this glycerol molecule we also know that glycerol has a three carbon it is a three carbon and in case of triacylglycerol all these carbons are attached with fatty acid now this different fatty acid may be a similar or it may be a different one so first fatty acid one fatty acid two and fatty acid three so this molecule is our triacylglycerol and i had talked in my previous video about the chemistry of triacylglycerol so now when you treat this triacylglycerol with the potassium hydroxide this is a strong alkali this is strong alkali so what will happen when you treat your triacylglycerol with the strong alkali like potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide okay so at that time this potassium will bind with fatty acid this potassium is a positive charge this fatty acid is a negative charge so because of this charge difference they will have a association with each other and this oh minus will simply replace this fatty acid so on the right side of equation what you get that this glycerol molecule on this glycerol molecule this fatty acids are replaced by this oh molecule so we have pure glycerol what is this this is glycerol and now in in addition to this glycerol we have three fatty acids right and each binds with the potassium so we have to take three potassium hydroxide molecule okay so now this potassium this potassium it is bound with the fatty acid this fatty acid which is of negative charge and such three soap molecules we get okay so this is a potassium salt of fatty acid and in the simple term it is known as soap so this process this chemical reaction it is known as saponification it is known as saponification now we understand that what is saponification so let's try to understand that what is saponification number so saponification number so to understand this saponification number let's take an example of butter let's take an example of butter now take one gram of butter you are taking one gram of butter so suppose this is a one gram of butter right sorry this is a one gram of butter in the in the butter we know that butter contains many triacylglycerol molecule so for example i am showing this one triacylglycerol molecule in addition to this triacylglycerols it also contains certain free fatty acid so these are the free fatty acid this is also free fatty acid so when you take a one gram of butter and add potassium hydroxide now this potassium hydroxide is added into this one gram of butter in the step wise okay in the step wise so you go on adding potassium hydroxide so what will happen 
as you add more and more potassium hydroxide what will happen more and more this sorry potassium salts this potassium salts of fatty acid will be generated more and more potassium salts of fatty acids are generated that means soap is generated and, and of course there will be a glycerol molecule but right now they are not of the importance okay so this soap will be generated so you go on adding this potassium hydroxide up to what point you go on adding potassium hydroxide till all the fatty acid it may be in the bound form or it may be in the free form all this fatty acid from this one gram of butter once it converted to the soap all of these fatty acids are converted to the soap at that point you will stop adding this potassium hydroxide and then you measure that how much potassium uh, hydroxide is added so that quantity of potassium hydroxide that quantity of potassium hydroxide it becomes your saponification number it becomes your saponification number so if i want to describe the saponification number in simple one sentence then that then i can say that it is the quantity of potassium hydroxide in milligram in milligrams the quantity of potassium hydroxide in milligrams which is required to saponify all the fatty acid it may be a free or bound form of fatty acid from the 1 gram of butter okay for example for example uh, in some literature it is written that butter for butter the saponification number the saponification number is approximately 220 now what does it mean it means that 220 milligram of koh 220 milligram of potassium hydroxide is required is required to saponify to saponify all fatty acids all fatty acids means it may be a free or it may be a bound so 22 milligram of koh is required to saponify all the fatty acids from 1 gram 1 gram of given fat 1 gram of given fat and in this case the given fat is butter so 1 gram of butter okay so this is the definition of saponification number saponification number the saponification number the general definition is the the quantity of potassium hydroxide in milligrams which is required to saponify all the fatty acids from the 1 gram of given fat okay so this is a saponification number so now next question arises that why saponification number is important why saponification number is important what information we can get from this saponification number as earlier as earlier we have discussed that this uh, this various identification of fats and oils technique they are required to whether uh, to determine whether your fat is pure or not whether what is the degree of adulteration what is the composition of lipid so how the saponification number will help us how the saponification number will help us to get some of that information so by by the discussion one thing is clear that the koh the quantity of koh which is required it depends on the number of fatty acid it depends on the number of fatty acids in in 1 gram of fat in 1 gram of lipid right so uh, so let's say uh, let's compare let's take example of lipid 1 this is one hypothetical lipid and other is lipid 2 okay let's say in this lipid 1 lipid 1 it contains a special type of triacyl glycerol special type of triacyl glycerol glycerol which contains short chain fatty acid so i am showing by the small boxes short chain fatty acid in case of lipid 2 this lipid 2 is such that it has it it also contains triacyl glycerol but in this case this triacyl glycerol this triacyl glycerol is containing long chain fatty acid so i am i am showing a long boxes okay okay so the difference between lipid 1 and lipid 2 is that in lipid 2 there are long chain fatty acids whereas in case of this lipid 1 we have short chain fatty acid now uh, now uh, we know that we have to determine in the 1 gram of given lipid okay so in this case the weight of individual triacyl glycerol will be lower right so in the 1 gram of given fat there will be a higher number of higher number of fatty acids all it may be free or it may be a bound whereas in case of lipid 2 in case of 1 gram there will be a lower number of fatty acid why lower number of fatty acid why because the individual fatty acid as they are long chain their individual fatty acids weight is more so ultimately in the one gram of fatty acid there will be a lower number of fatty acids okay whereas in in, in this case there are the shorter chain fatty acids so in one gram of given fat there will be a more and more number of 
these fatty acids will be there. So now, when the higher number of fatty acids are, are, are there, there will be more KOH required, more potassium hydroxide is, is required. Okay. Whereas in this case, as it has lower number of fatty acid, they have a less number of KOH or less quantity, less quantity of potassium hydroxide is required. Okay. And we know that it is the quantity of potassium hydroxide which defines our saponification number. So in this case, saponification number, saponification number, saponification number is lower, is lower. Whereas in this case, the saponification number is higher. So based on that, we can say that if particular lipid contains a higher number of short chain fatty acid, higher number of short chain fatty acid, their saponification number will be higher. Whereas if some fat, it contains more and more long chain fatty acid, we can get an information that saponification number is the lower. So here I'm giving one more example that oleomargarine, oleomargarine, which is, uh, which you can easily purchase on the market and its saponification number, its saponification number is approximately 180. Whereas we already talked about the butter, its saponification number, its saponification number is around 220. So now see the butter has higher saponification number than the oleomargarine. So that means butter contain more short chain fatty acid as compared to oleomargarine. Oleomargarine contains more long chain fatty acids, more long chain fatty acids. So this information we can get from the saponification number. So this was all about the saponification number. In the next video, I will discuss about the acid number. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.